What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over some camera adjustments to make the game a little bit nicer to play, and overall just improve the quality of the camera system, make it more up to date and relevant for other fighting games. Now there's a ton of camera features that you can implement to kind of get this effect and make uh, the camera a little bit better, you know, each time. But I think the main thing right now that needs to be adjusted was the fact that the camera was actually sticking to the center of the players regardless of how far over on the screen your characters got. Because of that, um, you know, I'd be able to walk up over to the other character and we'd be in the center of the screen and the edge of the map would be in the center as well, or just a little bit uh, past the center. So we wouldn't really be able to see all that much of where we could walk and we'd see a lot of where we couldn't walk and especially if you're doing like an inside level well this is terrible you don't want all this extra space so we can go ahead and fix that and that adjustment can also fix the walls you see the walls were coming right behind the, the character so before they were making it where they were very very close to the character since they fought the character we don't want them to be so close to the character otherwise you'll be bouncing before you even touch the edge of the screen but making this adjust this adjustment will make sure that the walls stay at the appropriate location this is what it looks like you hit the opponent the opponent bounces off the wall and gets up and you can see the way the walls move like i said they don't exactly I won the round there due to the, uh, the time limit running out, but what I was saying is uh, you don't exactly see this because the walls will be invisible, of course, in the end. But you can see that the walls are stopping and they give the player all this all this uh, space to move. Now, of course, if you want, you could still lock them in while the player is in the corner. But otherwise, this is pretty much the best way to do it. All right, so today's episode is gonna be fairly simple in terms of the logic we have. It's basically just gonna be changes in default camera. I'm also gonna go over some changes that you could potentially make to make your game, you know, maybe a little bit fancier or use cameras of other styles. However, I'm not gonna show the actual logic for that today because uh, the other camera episodes actually will all be finished within a another episode that is planned since the camera kind of is actually reliant on these other features. Before we get started, if you want to catch up on the series, we are on episode 65, so we are very far along. We have made quite a large amount of episodes. If you want to catch up, I'll leave a link in this iCard in the top right corner right now. You can go back to the first episode or watch the entire fighting game playlist, and that should help you get all caught up. I will also just leave the camera episodes if you want to watch them and get caught up without caring about the rest of the series. Alright, so before, the way we were setting up the camera was we had event tick, and it was grabbing player 1 and player 2, making sure that they were both valid, getting their proper locations, and moving the camera to basically the midpoint of that. Um, it does kind of depend on what we pass it along, but for now we're using the midpoint of those values. I was setting this minimum camera height to make sure that regardless of where the character started, the camera was already at the proper location. And I've added some things in here, which obviously I'm going to go over. But then we are setting the field of view. So these are all good, but let's think about a few things. I've gone ahead and written a determine if camera should move function. And basically what this does is it'll just determine based on the location that a character is if the camera should actually move or not. And this is useful because the camera should not move if the characters are up against the left and right max boundaries. The left and right max float values we have. We made these in a function called set outer boundaries. But now we're improving it because before we weren't actually doing anything with left and right max. We were doing stuff with left and right max when we originally made it, but at that point we just were using the location 
as the walls. Now we have actual walls for the player, which is good because we need things like bounce, but the locations are also good too. For example, in this case, the location can be used to determine how far the camera boundaries and the camera should be able to go. So in this case, this is my set outer boundaries function. Again, you should already have this if you copied the camera tutorials or if you watched them, but let me explain what's going on here. So basically, we were getting the actual location, breaking it up to set the actual location of the camera edges. And we were actually setting left max and right max again in this function already so you should already have this make sure your values are accurate for example um, this is the player one reference y value since I want to get the left max I should probably do the math based on that y value so I take the players y value subtract 1000 from it we subtract a negative 200 or basically we add 200 and then for uh, the right max one I do basically the same thing where I take player 2's location, I add 1000 units to it, and I add a negative 200. And this is basically we subtract 200. And then we set that to be the right max. So now that we have these variables set and with the proper values, we can actually use them in a case where it's important. For example, in our camera boundaries. So the determine if camera should move function. Now you can go ahead and hit plus function to create a new function here. And then go ahead and call it something along these lines. And then inside, make sure you click on the function node itself or click on the name in the function graph here. And add an input of a float. So you just hit this little plus, change it to a float and then name it. It is going to be called whatever you want, I called it camera move location. And camera move location is basically basically going to check where the location of the camera will be after a suggested move. They can tell the game that the camera needs to stop moving. Or basically that it needs, you know, it's reached the edge and at this point it doesn't need to go any farther. So the way you do this is I take the camera move location I check if it's greater than our left max because remember left max is left of the way the camera is. So the way the camera is facing, the left of the camera, um, out of its field of view, if the camera move location was going to move to a value smaller than that, then can move is false. If that's true, then we continue on and we check right max. We basically want to make sure that this value is less than right max. And if that's true, then we return node with can move and just so you know you can click on it anywhere in these functions or on the variable itself inputs outputs and you can pick uh, the boolean can move here as an output so you'll have to type return node in every time all right now let's take a step back at this again so this is all the logic prior to this episode right so where do we want to put this determine if character should move function we want to put this before we set the actor location for the camera. So it's set on tick because it needs to, you know, update accurately and blend accurately with the way characters are moving. We can't know that ahead of time. However, we can still modify certain aspects of them or just flat out skip certain aspects of them if the camera should not be able to move. So for example, I still want the walls to be able to move to a certain extent and we still want the field of view to be going even if the can move boolean returns false here. So I drag right off of it and I bring it into a branch. If it's false, then I'm setting actor location. And what I've done here is kind of a little trick to make it so that we're only setting the actor location for the Z value. So basically if the camera should not move um, and I guess I should be calling this determine if camera should move horizontally or something like that. But if the camera should be able to move, then theoretically they have no change on the X and the Y. So what I've done here is I've still called set actor location like I've done below. So I've pasted this. Remember, this is only if can move is false here. If can move is true, then we're setting the actor location of the camera determining left player, setting the inner boundaries, and all this other stuff. If it's false, then we're going to set the actual location, and I am going to pass in the Z, the same Z that we've been using. So check this out. 
Now remember in set actor location, I've copied it here. You have this new location variable. Well, this is a vector, so you can right click on it and split pin. When you split the pin, you then have the X, Y, and Z values. So I get the actor location of the camera, just like this, and I split this pin. And then I pass in the X and the Y to this new set actor location. And basically what I'm saying is the location of the camera is going to be your X and Y value that is not going to update. But this return value Z here is yet to be used. And we don't want to use the return value of the camera. We want to use our operation that actually moves the camera and the field of view and all that other stuff. You plug that in right here. And that's what's going on here. Then, as I said, um, I move the determine left player and the set inner boundaries to be directly after the set actor location call if can move from determine if camera should move returns true. And the reason for this is remember, I want the uh, boundaries to also stop moving once we reach the edge. That way there's plenty of space between the boundaries the rest of the logic in here is stuff we've already done. Basically, it gets the actor's location, checks zoom levels, and then sets the field of view. Now, what I did want to talk to you about is some other issues that exist. So, for one, if you're playing the game and your opponent gets up, sometimes, not always, but sometimes they will get up and they will do kind of this jitter um, upon recovery. So, let me say that I hit this guy, just like that then they get up. You can see that little bit of jitter. That's actually Unreal's crouch function screwing up, believe it or not. It does have to do, or at least it can have to do, with the capsule collider or component on the character, but often it's just an Unreal bug. So that actually is not an issue with the camera and it's nothing that you have to worry about. Um, it will be resolved the next time we cover anything with crouching in particular, whether it just uh, different crouch animations or attacks or whatever we will get to it then for sure but it is a little bit difficult anyway guys that's all i got for today it's a very short and sweet episode i'm actually working on some more fighting game stuff in the background which is why i kept this one on, a little bit on the shorter side i wanted more time to finish some things for the next upcoming weeks and i thought this was a standalone episode if this video helped you and helped you achieve the camera results that you want then please subscribe it does more for the channel than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. Helps me out a lot. To the people who are already subscribed to me on Patreon and YouTube subscription, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. We'll be happy to help you out for free. And then if you want to watch live programming or just come watch me play some games, you can check out live streams that I do on this channel at youtube.com slash bro every Friday at 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can catch me playing Dark Souls or another multiplayer experience on the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash bro 27 I will leave iCard links to these videos. Anyway, guys, thank you so much once again. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.